some more about the bullying that's happening at the Jefferson County Public Schools. So JCPS here in Louisville is having a massive bullying uh, situation. They have an epidemic of bullying. So JCPS. Um, there's a, there's one case where the boy was being uh, picked up and he was hung by a shirt in the bathroom stall. Another story about uh, a girl who got beat up by six boys and then her cell phone was stolen. She told the principal, um, this is at middle school, at uh, Lassiter, La Lassiter Middle School. So uh, um, they, they stole her cell phone the first time. They did it again after she told the principal. So the principal and the administration didn't do a damn thing about it. And then she got sexually assaulted. Though the principal and the administration of Lazarus Middle School should be fired. They neglected an important and serious allegation. They didn't do anything about it. The incident repeated. They are, they are derelict in their duties and they should, they should be fired right out. And I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to guess that the principal and the administrators did not Recognize it as bullying because they're bullier, they're bullies themselves. The professors are the oppressors. The teachers are the oppressors. Political powers when one group oppresses another group, and many times, just like the Stanford or Sanford prison experiments, um, I guess Stanford or Sanford. Let's see. This the prison experiments, which has showed that if you wear uh, the prison guard uniform, you'll become a, a torturous prison guard asshole. Stanford, Stanford prison experiment. So, um, because of the Stanford prison experiment, we see that when you are entered into a role and you're supposed to play a role, that you can get into the role too much and become a tyrant and a bully. So. Uh, uh, more complaints. The Thomas Jefferson Middle School. Uh, two other complaints claim two students were bullied at different times. An exceptional child education student with epilepsy. So he's an exceptional child uh, with epilepsy. A speech impairment and a learning disorder was the target of numerous slurs about his condition, according to Gordon. In May, another student hit him in the head while he got off the school bus, putting him under special watch for fear the head blow would bring on seizures. The boy's mother, Tara Hunt, tripled in Gordon's office while she told the reporters about the case, and she prayed for summer break to come soon. Another Thomas Jefferson Middle School student was an 11-year-old sixth grader and a new recruit on the cheerleading team last year. After a cheer routine in the gym, the complaint says students called him gay. A few weeks later, with a black marker, they wrote vulgar slurs on his shoes, according to a draft of the suit. Vanessa Wickens, uh, Wisinski, Wisinski, Wisinski? The teacher at the school told him he looked gay because of his clapping and cheering, according to the complaint. So again, you have the teachers and the administrators are involved in the bullying too. So Vanessa Wikinski, a teacher of the school, told him he looked gay because of his clapping and cheering. Later that year, the boy attempted suicide, according to the draft of the suit. His mother, uh, B. Kisha Cosby, said his teachers should have known about the taunting. The school's principal, Kimberly Gregory, and several other teachers are accused of negligence. In the draft of the suit, another 14 students are accused of intentional infliction of emotional distress. So the students are being uh, sued themselves. On Friday, the family of a boy found injured on a bathroom at Fraser Elementary School last year has filed a suit against two fifth graders they believe were responsible for the assault, leaving him hanging by his shirt. The school's principal and a teacher are also named in the suit on claims they did not adequately protect the child. Gordon and Ag, Ag, Agiker Katimba, the father of the child, filed a lawsuit Friday against Teresa Durham, the principal, and the child's teacher, Michelle Hill, as well as the two students. On March 23, 2011, the second grade boy was found in a locked bathroom stall hanging by his shirt collar and a hook on the back of the door. He was taken to Kosar Children's Hospital, where he was hospitalized for several days before being released. The TJ Middle School student taunted for his cheerleading stood in front of the reporters and cameras in front of the room and called his year at the school a horrible time. He said he'll spend this year at home school and his mother has enrolled him in the gymnastics program. As his mother began to cry during the news conference, the boy walked to the back of the room and put his arms around her. She muffled her sobs in his t-shirt. So, um, there's a Wave 3.3 wave3.com article father soon after child was allegedly bullied by sarah eisenminger eisenminger the father of a second grader found hanging in a jefferson county public elementary school is now suing the school and the alleged bullies in march 2011 the boy was found hanging by a shirt by a hook in a bathroom stall at fraser 
for Fraser Elementary. The boy's father said two fifth graders are responsible, the students as well as the child's teacher and the school's principal are all named in the suit. The lawsuit claims that prior to the alleged attack, the boy's father complained about the boys bullying his son on the bus. Metro Police have said that there is no definitive proof of foul play. JCPS does not comment on pending l litigation. So, bullying. Lots of bullying are happen. is happening here in Kentucky, which is no, no surprise. Kentucky's a, a violent state. Has been for lots of time. We're the home of the McCoys. You know, it wasn't just Hatfield and McCoys, but there was lots of bloody feuds in Harlan and uh, Breathitt County, Clay County. Even the governor of Kentucky was shot by a Clay County feudist. Uh, you had Devil, uh, Bill Howard. So Bill Howard shot William Justice Goebel, um, 1900, and Bill Howard it was a feudist. So. Uh, 1975, the white people in Louisville got out on the streets and started attacking the black children for nearly a year. White people was attacking black kids in Louisville. And this is 35 years ago, 36 years ago, or 75, so 37 years ago. Um, so, yeah, it's not not surprised. Uh, not surprising. A couple things I want to read here. Uh, six, section four. Uh, the U.S. Constitution, since I had mentioned earlier that Kentucky doesn't know, or Louisville doesn't know shit about revolution. Louisville was founded by um, George Rogers Clark, who was a military general. George Rogers Clark, who was hired to go kill a bunch of Indians. And while he was killing Indians, he settled, uh, put an establishment here on the banks of the Ohio, Ohio River, on Kentucky's western end. And they, he did that in 1778, which is two years after the 1776 Declaration of Independence. So Louisville wasn't even established when the revolution started. So they weren't integral in the revolution. They were fighting. Uh, they were fighting the Indians. That's what Louisville's revolution was about. They weren't fighting the British redcoats. Here in Louisville, they was fighting the Indians. So they was the oppressors. They weren't the liberators. They were the ones that was making sure uh, uh, you know other people didn't have rights and. Um, I guess that's how they felt good about themselves. And then after uh, they established it, they established it in 78 and become chartered in 1780. So uh, two years after George Rogers Clark had established it, it became a city. They named it after King Louis the 16th. So King Louis the 16th, who is a tyrant and oppressor and imperialist, which is why his name is on you know this city all the way in the middle of America, uh, is being named after a French monarchist and elitist, uh, the same uh, aristocrat who was who had his head chopped off in the French Revolution. So the French people, they say, fuck this guy, we're going to chop his fucking head off, we don't give a shit about him, um, which I think, b short of that, Mubarak putting him in a cage, which is, you know, humane, right? It's humane, it's not murdering him, it's not taking his life, but I think it also is clearly shows that they have dis deposed the dictator. They put the dictator in power behind bars because that's what bad people, that's where bad people should be. Bad people should be behind bars. And if you're a criminal, it doesn't matter if you're poor or rich, if you're a banker, if you're on Wall Street, if you're a politician, if you break the law, if you're a police officer, if you break the law, the rule of law, which is a democracy, so here's some lessons in democracy. If you break the law, uh, it, everybody uh, is culpable for breaking the law. Nobody's above the law. That's what the rule of law is. Nobody's above it. So if you're a police officer and you break the law, that means you can get arrested for breaking it. That's the rule of law. But a lot of times in America, it's a two-tiered system. The one for the rich, one for the poor. The poor get a public pretender, and the rich got a lawyer, and they, um, they get off with, uh, with, with as much stuff as they can get away with. So uh, Louisville doesn't know shit about revolution. When Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution legitimizes revolution, the uh, revolution is legal here in Kentucky. Kentucky, in the Bill of Rights, uh, Kentucky's Constitution, the Bill of Rights, in Section 4, it says that the power is inherent in the people, um, the consent of the government, right? The same thing as Constitution, but it says that we have a right to alter, reform, or abolish the government. So, by any means necessary, all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, happiness, and the protection of property. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such manner as they meet, may deem proper. So, in such manner as they may deem proper, uh, by any means necessary. So, that uh, legitimates 
revolution. We're allowed to have a revolution in Kentucky. Kentucky, you can be a revolutionary and it is perfectly legal if you think that the Constitution has any power. Right now you've had the legislature and the court system which has circumvented Kentucky's Constitution very much so. So the original words, original intent of Kentucky's founding fathers, including William Justice Goble, a German Kentuckian, uh, have been circumvented and have been changed um, uh, up till today. So I'm a strict constitutionalist. I uh, believe in the U.S. Constitution and Kentucky's Constitution. If we are not going to abide by the charter which we had established for our government to be run on, we need a new charter. So, if Kentucky, if you're not going to get a new charter, you need to go back to the one that you have right now. Fuck what the courts say. Fuck the legislature. You've done bastardized this damn document way too much. Uh, it's time to go back to the Constitution, back to Kentucky's Constitution, and figure out what it is that we... Uh, what our rights are and how it is that we're allowed to govern ourselves. So, uh, here in Wicked Lexington, Kentucky, by Fiona Young Brown, I found a poem. It's called In Kentucky. In Kentucky is a fame poem by James Mulligan. So, James Mulligan, the courtesy of University of Kentucky, he's got this little picture here. So, In Kentucky by James Mulligan. The moonlight falls the softest in Kentucky. The summer days come oftenest, oftest, I'm going to redo it, <laughs> the moonlight falls the softest in Kentucky, the summer days come oftest in Kentucky, friendship is the strongest, love's light glows the longest, yet wrong is always wrongest in Kentucky, life's burdens bear the lightest in Kentucky, the home fires burn the brightest in Kentucky, while players are the keenest, cards come out the meanest, the pocket empties cleanest, in Kentucky. The sun shines ever brightest in Kentucky. The breezes whisper lightest in Kentucky. Plain girls are the fewest. Their little hearts are truest. Maidens eyes the bluest in Kentucky. Orators are the grandest in Kentucky. Officials are the blandest in Kentucky. Boys are all the flyest. Danger ever nighest. Taxes are the highest in Kentucky. The bluegrass waves the bluest in Kentucky. Yet Blue buds are the fewest in Kentucky. Moonshine is the clearest, by no means the dearest, and yet it acts the queerest in Kentucky. The dove notes are the saddest in Kentucky. The streams dance on the gladdest in Kentucky. Hip pockets are the thickest. Pistol hands the slickest. The cylinder turns the quickest in Kentucky. The songbirds are the sweetest in Kentucky. The thoroughbreds are fleetest in Kentucky. Mountains Tower proudest, thunder peals the loudest, the landscape is the grandest, and politics the damnedest in Kentucky by James H. Mulligan. So that's really cool. It touches on a lot of parts about Kentucky, which is totally true. Um, they talk about the hip pockets are the thickest, pistol hands the slickest, the, cel the cylinder turns the quickest. So it shows how pistols um, are very popular in Kentucky. They talk about songbirds, they talk about thoroughbreds, so we got horses, we got cardinals. Uh, they talk about mountain towers, proudest, thunder peals, the loudest, landscape is the grandest, and politics the damnedest. So it shows about the corruption in Kentucky, about how our officials are the blandest. Um, we love our orators. Talks about the men, the women. Talks about moonshine. It's not the dearest, it acts the queerest. So we got moonshine legacy here. Uh, we're running moonshine out of these hills. We've been breaking pro prohibition standards. Even though America said prohibition was canceled in the 1930s, said it was a bad idea because it was creating Al Capone's. Kentucky has maintained the alcohol prohibition in 70 of Kentucky's 120 counties. So even though alcohol is illegal in Kentucky, we've been still getting alcohol. And same thing with all the rest. You want to... Declare war on drugs, Hal Rogers. You want to declare war on drugs, Mitch McConnell. You want to declare war on drugs here, Jack Conway. You want to have Operation Unite, where you damn federal people are getting together and throwing more fuckers in prison, more poor Kentucky fuckers in prison. That's some bullshit. That ain't right. We uh number one cash crop in Kentucky is marijuana. We have lots of pillbillies and meth heads. You haven't stopped the drug flow. Drew Thornton had all the cocaine. He came out of Lexington aristocracy. It's $15 worth of cocaine strapped on him. He jumped out of a plane and died. This is the 1980s. We had the king of pot, 
the grandfather or the godfather of marijuana came out of Kentucky, John Robert Boone, the largest marijuana syndicate in the entire nation. That's Kentucky. So you haven't stopped the war on drugs. You haven't stopped the flow of drugs. You have fucked up a lot of people's lives, especially nonviolent people. Every dollar for education that we spend in education saves a dollar for our prisons later on. We'll spend our money on education, Kentucky.